TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. And, uh, yeah, man, don't forget we do got Patreon. We post five days a week there. Uh, we also got twitch.com. Username's on the bottom of the screen, man. You see it, man. That's where you can catch any, um, that's where you can catch any uh, live streams and things of that nature. But this is from Having a Shockers. What's good with you, my boy? He's always bringing us that real gritty hood. Like, not even hood, just like ghetto. No, hood's the right word. That real gritty under life hood stuff. Like, he really be in it. You know what I'm saying? In the dark, in the nighttime, like taking risk. I salute that type of behavior, man. The city overrun by 12 year old dealers. That's tough. Do not attempt to recreate anything depicted in this documentary. Mm. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Do not attempt to recreate anything depicted in this documentary. It is not intended to glorify the use or sale of drugs. It's for educational purposes only. Viewer discretion is advised. Yeah, I've seen a girl die in here five times one night. Drugs have ruined the city. Wait, five times in that? Okay. Let me just watch. Yeah. Yeah. That guy's jumped over the counter after him and just bang, just stabbed him. Coventry, a city in the UK with the second highest crime rate per capita. Residents here consistently witness violence, drug use and poverty. I'm here today to take a deeper look into their stories and the struggles they face. I've got the order with us and he's kicking off. Kicking he's late. What are you doing? He's just kicking off because I'm still using it. It's a summer's evening in Coventry and business is booming for this young drug runner. So too late, one dog. There's a ten I boxed off me debt. And you wouldn't even take us yesterday. You <laughs> couldn't believe it. You have to see it. No, no, I only had a little, uh, no, I only had a few bits on me and that's what it was. Boy. Seven ton, I've got the Murray and all your silly not come tick me. I'm telling ya. I ain't even gonna put my little two cents in on fronting somebody. <clears throat> There's a channel for you, Jack. I'll take you now. We don't have no tick on me last night. That's what I'm saying. So it's a little one of each again then. And then I'll box up. I just took my last brown off me, man. Just two legs. <laughs> <laughs> so I owe you five are still. Yeah, and yeah. then two legs. We all know what these terms are. Light and dark are terms to use. Crack and dog. I, I don't want to repeat it. I'll take 15 quid again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's 20 other. Huh? No, you yeah, two fifteen and then the five, so that's twenty. Either. No, I owed you fifteen, so I've just given you ten off the fifteen. So you owe me a five, and then you just had two on two. You're yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry, very <laughs> bad. Can't save. Stay safe. I'm going, man. Safe. Bye bye. Business is booming. Come look. Yeah. I can't put everything in this documentary like. on YouTube. It's gritty and raw. To see the full uncensored version, join my Patreon for as little as one pound a month. To lads like this, cash is the priority, not the drugs effects on the community. And my little sister, she was a heroin addict from she was 11 years old. That's and um, I, I left Coventry when crack hit Coventry because I didn't want nothing to do with it because it's bad, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I moved to uh, North Yorkshire and I lived there for 20 years. Over that 20 years of me living in, in North Yorkshire, I got a phone call six times telling me you need to get to a certain hospital. We've took your sister in. She's had, she's OD'd, and we're not expecting her to make it. This is. Oh, hold on, let me talk to you, man. Just a shocker. This is well put together. I'm not gonna lie. Like the vibe of this is like different. I'm feeling like. Maximum effort, as you should. Let's put in it in. By the time I've got to the hospital, she's come to, got up and done one to go and find the next hit. For many, the grip of addiction That's is relentless. Page three. Page three. We're about 150 remaining. 
to the ravine. Yeah. The ravine. Like, it was like, I think it was just under four, I think it was about 475 actually. Yeah, it was. Oh, it would, would be 600 miles. Oh, okay. from the start? Yeah, as in from the tip to when we paid that thing, it was 600. Yeah. And then, the owners in that building, so I'd say it's about 9, 850 or something. That, that, they probably doubled it, but that's what I'm saying, fam. It would have been. It would have been. Thinking, what's your about my head for? It's only about f four or five years. Ah, it's hard. It was six. And then them and said, f that was good. Because you gotta remember, it was like two, a week and a half or a week. And after a dealer is never gonna forget your tab. He's gonna know exactly, exactly the number, when it happened. He's gonna break it down in a detail, just like he's doing right now. First, we paid no one this time, time. It's a sunny day in England and I'm on my way to Wood End in Coventry, one of the highest crime areas within the city. Now I've seen guys going to jail, yeah? Yeah. Uh, and when you hear their story, they've, they've fucking put a house on crack. But a house on crack. You know, they used to go three holidays a year on a couple of cars and fucking car and they're, and they're in jail and even getting visits. That's how, you know, because the, the drug... That drug turns you to a psychotic, you know yeah. what I mean? Come and stand outside these shops between four and eight of a night time. Okay. Tell me I'm wrong, yeah? So, so, so I'll come here tonight at four to eight p.m.? Anytime from four to, four to eight p.m., mate. No offence. You ain't welcome in the area because they don't know you. Okay. You won't get anywhere near the shops. If your face don't fit, you don't belong round here. Okay. So it's like it's like a, a high, high... Uh, no, we all look out area. for ourselves because the government don't give two shits about deprived areas. Of course, I hope yeah, you yeah. are recording because it's the truth. Everyone round here has all... Do you know what? We sit and listen to all these politicians and all these people go, oh, this area, that area. This area has been deemed the Compton of Coventry. No, it isn't. Yeah. We are nothing like the Americans, nothing whatsoever. Yes, there's street violence, but what... Uh, hey, now I'm getting real hood compton -y vibes now that you said that. Like, I was trying to, like, process it in my head, like, the vibe, but that, that that's it. That's what I'm feeling. West Side, Chicago, Compton, California-ish type Why? energy. Why? Because the government's not running properly. Yes, there's problems in the streets. Why? Because the police are underfunded. The council are underfunded. People are underfunded. In this area, what is there for the kids to do? Where's the play centres? Where's the community centres? Where's the parks? You can't walk around. Same issues as Compton and, and West Side and South Side and East Side of Chicago. I mean. and, and it's not. She was real down bad about being compared to Americans. Like, chill out. <laughs> Just this area. It's 99% of England right now. You cannot walk around. You cannot feel safe. And you want to know why? Because the government don't give two shits. And there's the truth. Thank you. Well, what, what about you, boss? What do, what do you think? He'll back any one of his customers that come in the door, mate. Do you like working here? No, I enjoy working here. You enjoy working yeah, here? And have you ever had any problems? Like, has anyone tried to rob the store or anything like that? No, he's the one that actually deals with all the problems in the area. OK. This man should actually be given a medal for what he does for this area and how everyone actually comes to him and says, Bill, can you help us with the kids? Because they listen to the community, they listen to the elders of the community. Yeah. They ain't gonna listen to somebody that's coming in going, oh, well, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do the other. Nah, mate, we're a community, we look after our, each other. Yeah, I get no problems here. Yeah. And if you guys could, like, improve the area, what would you do? Put all the funding back into it, bring the parks back, bring the community centres back, bring community policing back, bring everything back that the government took away from the kids and stand there and bitch about these poor little kids on the streets now. Yeah, of people going, oh, they, they, they're nothing but trouble. No, why are they trouble? Because you've took everything. I hear her, I agree with her 100%, but it also sounds like she's contradicting herself at the same time. This is a community. We're not going to listen to anybody coming in and trying to impose this, this, and the third. But what do you want to happen again? You're going to have to listen if you want those things back, right? Think away, you've took all the immunity, you've took everything that the kids need, and it's not about, it's not even about us adults anymore. What what actually is there for a future in this country for any child? Nothing, because the government don't give a shit about it. Put your own country first before you put everybody else first. Okay, thank you guys. Thanks for your opinions, yeah.
Take care. And we all know exactly what she's talking about. It don't even gotta be said. I get the tone of what you're saying. <laughs> it's hard. Hard. Skills, man. Skills. Man's got, man's got skills, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's up, mate? Do you know why you get stoned from around here? Get what? Get what? Stone. Stone? Yeah. What, like weed? What? Nah, yo, what do you say? Crack. Gypsy. Join you. Your... You look like an undercover cop. Don't do it. This is crazy to have in a vlog, man. This is just randomly be happening out there. I mean, when you in that environment, yeah, it happens. So let me not even say randomly. It's just crazy to see it, like, in the UK. Because don't nobody really, really do no videos like this dude. So now when you see it, it's like, oh, wow. He look like an undercover. Though, I know you sure. can get weed from. No weed. No. You don't want weed? No. Nah, we, we don't do nothing like that, mate. Now nah, what do you want? Hey, stone. Yeah, what? Hey. How, How much worth? Ten. 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 What, yeah. Just one? One, yeah. For a short time. Can you get me one? One sec. He gave me undercover cop vibes, but also his outfit is not screaming undercover. He got on shorts, no socks, hooping shoes, and a jacket. Like, what's going on? What season is it right now? Oh, I don't know what's going on. But that young lad is probably about 12 years old. Uh, the guy just came up and asked for crack. And that guy, that 12 year old kid has just said like, wait there, wait there. Jeez. One more tumble. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm waiting for the buzz now to go to another high crime area in Coventry. Uh, there I have an interview set up with a 16-year-old drug runner. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna ask him a few questions and get a little bit of insight into what it's like uh, to live that life at such a young age, man. See you there. Okay, so I'm waiting in this little little alley to meet this geezer sketch it's a real sketch right now honestly what am i thinking man could be a setup or anything <laughs> and like look look at their state man it's like a whole it's like a whole uh, square man like proper little alleys and shit Yo. Um, little alley thing here we call it a gangway in chicago yeah <laughs> oh. that's why it's giving me sketchy vibes this is our... Hello? Yes, you can see it. Yeah, well, go on. You can see it. It's a cop coming to me. I've just met up with, uh, with S. That's, that's your name in it, bro. S, yeah. And uh, I'm just going to ask him a, a few questions about, about this life, man. So, uh, when... What what would you say was your like first exposure into this life and like how old was you man? Yeah, first exposure probably about it's probably about twelve thirteen years old you know and uh, yeah that'd be days yeah man because obviously I've got an older bro in it and yeah. he was on that so like, obviously there'd be times where my mom would just be like yo go take this over there in it and then my mom would just take it over there to the next person he'd give me some dough I'd give him the dough in it and then. Just from there, I kind of figured that out, and it's like, oh yeah, this is obviously that, and then put two, two together. By the time I was about, what, 14, 15, I started doing a little bit. Yeah. And then I saw man just start getting, me, start getting my feet deeper and deeper in it. And yeah, man. Yeah, bro, so like, it's kind of the same story for everyone around here, isn't it? It's like, you just, you see it going around, bro, like, it's an area where you grow up in it, and like, everybody around you's doing it, so 
see if you get away from it or you become a part of it, innit? Yeah. Would you would you say like when you first started it was like uh, minor things like just weed and that or was it straight away you was in the in the class A's oh, and all? Was, in, yeah, my boy was kind of involved a lot in it, so it was just straight into the like class A's and shit like that. So I'd be able to take like obviously I I didn't know what. The yeah, he had a stepping stone too. So he ain't had the girls really start from the bottom. I'm like, he started from the bottom, but his brother was there. So it was like, nah, I'm gonna let me teach you. Let me, you know what I'm saying? Class A's were like what exactly it was, but I just like, it was like powdery in it. I'm just giving powder to these people and then they're just giving me money for this powder. So it's like, yeah. so I didn't know what the powder was, what exactly what I knew there was certain in it. So, so you said like when you when you first started, it was with your, your brother and that. Have, mm. Like, have you lost anyone? Like, has anyone went to prison? Anyone been stabbed that you know? Or? Uh, yeah, man, people have been stabbed, people have been shot. To be been to prison, yeah, you know, in and out of prison, really. No, no one like in there for a long sentence or stuff like. But yeah, bro, like in this thing, you do like lose people, but it's it's unavoidable, bro. Like you can't speak for everyone else, and you can only speak for yourself, bro. So yeah, man, a lot of people have been stabbed, shot, and sent to jail over this man. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, what? I wonder if it's the same in the UK. I feel like it's not. Everything is tied in together, like in the, in Chicago at least. Like, you don't got to be involved in gangs to be trapping. Like, they can run separately. You know what I'm saying? I met a lot of trap people who are not gang members. No affiliation whatsoever. Just out here hustling, making money. Was that the same case out there? What would you say, man? What would you say is, like, the craziest thing uh, that you've seen, like, while doing this job, man, while you've been involved in this life, man? What's, like... It's the craziest crazy. thing that you've seen. Oh, do you know what? It's probably... Yeah, just seeing a guy get chopped down at night, bro. Just fucking... He must have been arguing with a couple of people over something, innit? And then just seeing a guy open the boot, just grab a machete and just start chopping the geezer down in the street, fam. That, to me, was a bit wild, innit? Because, like, obviously, I try and live a normal life by all of this, innit? So yeah. when I see something like that, I was just like, right, like, see. But don't get me wrong, like, there's a lot of stuff that people doing this like i wouldn't say it's justified and that but it's like i could see why they do it in it like obviously a guy might owe him a lot of money or like he might be doing something behind a guy's back or something like that in it but the way that that all like went down it was just kind of just like sparked out of nowhere in it like it was like a pack of animals yeah so yeah that to me was a bit wild actually even me i was taking a step back like yo fuck that shit like there was feds around the corner and everything like they didn't give a fuck bloody hell man but yeah bro so that's what I'm saying. See, that per, that 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 whole perpetuate. What's the what's the word for? That whole aggressive nature when it comes to violence. Like, oh yeah, it's up. No matter what the the, the, the surrounding situation. That, that like that is. That don't even correlate to if you're trying to get money. You know what I'm saying? If you're trying to get money, you want to stay away from M's and violence, and because that bring what police, which disrupts what money. So I mean I'm I'm wondering, I be wondering. It, it sounds like this dude right here, S, he just in the game. He just a hustler. He just trying to make money. Uh, he don't sound like he involved in like the, the gang portion of it. But I could be wrong. Well, yeah, especially in a city like that, like like this, you just gotta be careful in it, and just especially with who you're around as well, because you don't know what they're into and they could be dragging you into all sorts of that. Uh, what, what is the worst thing that you've seen happen on your, like, a uh, drug use journey? Um, I've seen people die. I've seen a few people die. I've brought a few people back to life. I've seen some bad violence over drugs, you know, over stupid amounts of money as well, you know. 20 pounds and someone getting chopped and getting 120 stitches in their back. So have you lost anyone like close to... Yeah, my little sister, she got murdered. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that was over a couple of shots between her, her and her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you get to heating stuff up, it fry your brain. You don't know what you're doing. You can have psychotic episodes and get to emming people. and that's what, Drug free is the way to be, man. She was staying in a place over in Birmingham in Hansworth. And I've seen all the videos to it from, you know, all the doorbells, you know, the ring doorbells. Yeah. This police officer would put them all together to put a video together to show the courts what happened in the last 
hour alive, you know, and it showed you him chasing her around the block. And she had something in her hand, and I know it would have been crack. That's why he was chasing her. And he's caught up with her, and he beat her to death in the house. Mm. So I've, got, you, I've got her ashes on me, so. What would you say the most you've made in like a day is, man? The most in a day? Yeah, the most you made in a day, man. Yeah, man, there's probably people out there that have made more than me, but in a day, bro, I probably took home like about two and a half, two and a half grand in a day. Okay. Yeah, man, that, was, that, that wasn't just off like, uh, obviously drug stuff, obviously I was doing like other things, so like I had a little, like a little lick, like a phone move, and obviously I made a lot of money off the wood that day as well, so, you know, I when you had it all up and that, like, yeah, two, two, not, two and a half grand, like, there's someone's like monthly uh, monthly earnings in a day, man. Yeah, like, man. People, people are working uh, at like uh, Powerland, 40 hours a That's cool. We mate, making 1,200 a month, bro. You <laughs> made two, two months wage in a day, man. Yeah, man. Oh, deal. It was all right, man. Yeah. And what, what, what would you do with the money, like? Honestly, bro, that's the thing with this lifestyle as well. Because you just, as quick as you get the money, yeah, no. you spend like just spend it quickly, bro. So honestly, just going out, fucking buying clothes, uh, fucking partying, you know what I mean? For driving around, yeah, that stuff, bro. Like just eats up your money, bro. In a week, fam, I'm just I'm trying to spend that in a day, bro. Literally, sometimes no. I see people spend like. 10 grand in a day, bro. Just call me 10 grand going to a shop, bro. Like Selfridge or something. Yeah, man. I got some homies in, in Chicago, man. They <laughs> Names will be named unnameless, but they used to spend like crazy. I was a modest spender, but the day was going insane. Uh, isn't it? And, and do you feel like that's because, like, you and, and maybe the other people that don't want to have, like, big big piles of money around them, like, so it's a bit hot having, like, loads of, loads of cash, like... Do you know what, bro? It's because they can. I'll it's because they can. It's because they can, innit? They've got the money, so they just literally spend it because they can make it back in like about a day or two, bro. Like, especially when you got business like that, obviously with the class in like if you're if you're a brick man, yeah. Then bro, you just literally sell a brick and you can you got your little money, you can go shopping or do whatever, bro. So yeah, man, that's why they spend it like that, because they get it as quick as they spend it. You know what I mean? So Yeah man. Yeah, I, I can't understand it. And obviously, I'm not uh, not like justifying it, but if you've got the money and you can do that, man, why not, innit? Yeah, man. Uh -huh. And it, like, if if there's any like younger lads watching, like what? Like, what? Bro broke it down 100% correctly. It's like he really would have trapped God right now. What advice would you say to him? Maybe they, I've I've chatted to so many people in in these areas that are like you know they look at this. Like, My advice, man, know what's coming for it. It's long hours. Um. Honestly, if you if you can go to school, get an education, get a trade, go to college, go to university, live the university life, have fun. You know what I'm saying? Because you grow up fast in these streets, and you don't realize it while you're in them. But death and death and jail is around the corner. It's closer than you think. So just just go be. If you have the possibility, even I know like here there's like in America there's like. Uh, for college, if you like go to uh, community college, you can work your way up, get some scholarships. And you can go to for free for a little bit. I forgot what it's called that takes care of it, but uh, there's opportunities somehow, some way. Lifestyle, like even some thirteen-year-olds today, and they're Pick like, "Oh, you know, we carry in noise. We want to be hard. Want to do." Uh, rolled in that and they don't really know what it's like man what, what would you say to some lads like like thinking about getting into this like game uh, man? all i say is if, if you've got to carry a knife to go places then don't go to them places bro like literally and if you've got like i just wouldn't recommend this for anyone bro even don't weed coat all of that stuff bro it is not worth it mate just stay in school if you can't do school bro just Go college, literally. There's stuff out there, yeah, to where you don't have to do this, bro, because it's not. Told you. Bro said the same thing I said, man. It ain't worth it at the end of the day. Because you making money on the spot, but, like, what's the, what's the, what's, look farther. What's the plan? Ain't nobody retiring off this. What's the real plan? Like, what's the, like, what's the so outro? Like, it's a trap, bro. It's literally a trap, bro. Once you're in, like, 
it's tough to get out, bro, because you get so used to it and, and it's not a life, bro. Like, there's bigger stuff, there's way more to life than this, and then I see anywhere I can put it. I wouldn't recommend it for no one, bro, and I wouldn't wish it on no one either, bro. Like, hell no, man. Yeah, well, well, I appreciate you, like, sharing your story and that, man, and I hope, like, any of the younger viewers, like, listening and, and uh, listen to your advice and what you said and hopefully they can, like, gain some insight and say, oh, maybe it's not the right thing that we're getting into, innit? Trust me, it's not, man. They can go, they should go to school, bro. Like, not even go to school, but, like, just do something that's not this, innit? Because, like, yeah, you get money and this and that, bro, but there's a lot of drama and a lot of stress that comes with it, bro, and you don't want to be walking around every day. You have to look over your back, bro, because that's not, that's not a life to live in it. Like, yeah, 100% people, correct. You know, like, I live... I've tried my best to live through, like, not through other people, but, like, to see what other people are doing and be like, right, okay, I don't... I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do... You know what I mean? Like, people watching, basically, so... I just recommend that you do the same. You know what I mean? You see people like that and just... Watch them and just see the type of shit they get into and then just ask yourself, is this a life you want to get into, isn't it? And then, yeah, man, go from there. Yeah, man. Yeah, thank, thanks for your time, bro. Appreciate that, man. While some young lives are entangled in drugs, others strive for a different future. I met a 17-year-old with dreams of a YouTube career. He agreed to show me around the areas he grew up in. Told you, pick up a cam. You can't go to college, you, don't, you ain't got the money, you don't feel like it, pick up a cam or do something else and share some stories. All right, so right now we're in the Burgess and the Burgess, this is somewhere that it's like everyone knows you just don't come here at night. We're in the city centre, but this is the one part of it that you just don't really come to at night. So this is where the McDonald's and that is. And basically, if you're not about that life, you're not here after dark. Like when it gets to dark, you don't come here after night. So it's always surrounded by a McDonald's and McDonald's is always the epicenter McDonald's or shell or shell petrol that's what you'll call it station what like for example one time I was here I'm a, I'm a youtuber yeah so I was recording YouTube videos and I was doing like public questions and all of that on this strip then it got dark and I was like oh let me just like get out now yeah and I've gone home literally as I've touched my, my house I've looked at Instagram and it's saying stabbing in Burgess McDonald's and how it must have happened was they said um, that there was like two two people were having beef or whatever and one of them ran into McDonald's and jumped over the counter to get away from the guy and that guy jumped over the counter after him and just bang just stabbed him so he's obviously come in jumped over this counter I feel like that's a, like as you trapping yourself when you run into a restaurant jump over the counter because you don't know where to go after that you don't know what's back there. You don't know where the doors is at. You're like, you're trapping yourself. Jumps after. It's unfortunate, man. Raymond just, just, just gone down, man, isn't it? Yeah. Jumped over the counter and hit him with the ba da ba 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 My bad. Hopefully he's okay, though. When I was in school, I definitely yeah, saw people that I was friends with go down that path and then we sort of split ways. I, d I don't know how it all happened. Like we were friends in, in school. Then when we left school, obviously people go their own ways and then you see them about and it's like, oh, that's the life that you, you chose now. Let's go down this way. Yes, my bro, what, what are you celebrating today, man? Just being happy, man. Just yes, being happy. come on, we it's love life, that. Isn't it? Come on, you know I mean? we're, making a, we're making a documentary about Coventry, man. You got yeah. any, anything to say about the city? I've been Coventry all my life, yeah? Yeah. I come from Wadanda, but we're down there, yeah? Would I think, yeah, we're done. Right? Everyone said Wadanda was a bad place. No, it weren't. I went there yesterday. It's a capsule estate, yeah? I've, I've been bought there since the eight, since I was born. Yeah? And I'll tell you a bit about me, yeah? Right. My name's Paul Platt, yeah? My nickname's Platzi, yeah? Government name, yeah? And I got put in care at the age of nine, yeah? yeah. I mean, we're done, yeah? I've done 15 years in prison, yeah? I've never hurt nobody in my life, yeah? I come out of prison and I live just here now. Yeah, I made a new life. I made new friends with a new life. And we then... How many years did he say? Did he say 15 or 50? What did he say? Coventry is a brilliant place to live. It's, it's cultural, isn't it? Would yeah. you say it's city of culture. Would you say it's changed over the years? Change. It's well changed. For the better... I come out of prison, yeah? I couldn't believe the change. Yeah. I couldn't believe the change. Yeah, it's changed for the better. But the only thing that I did notice that I feel sorry for people for is bad for drugs. 
bad for drugs, yeah. Because I see people sleep in doorways, yeah? And I've never seen that before I went to prison. When I come out, I thought, well, what's going on here? And they sit, he's at that. I used to give him £5, £10, £10, £10, but then I thought, nah. I said, yeah, I'll buy you food. I wouldn't give him no more money because I'm feeling that habit with drugs. Love it, shush you. I'll tell you one thing. Yeah, that's how I am. I'd rather not give you money. If I can give you food, cool, but change I've noticed. Right, one big change I've noticed since I come out of prison four years ago, yeah? yeah? It's very, very hard for people to get accommodation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah? But years ago, yeah? I've been with them, yeah? And you see a board up a flat or something, yeah? You go to council, yeah? So I am in chasing that flat. They get the keys to the flat now, yeah? I come out of prison, yeah? I got my flat. I live just... I live just nearby here, yeah? Yeah. It took me 19 months to get that flat. So I did four years in prison, 19 months in the hostel. Yeah? yeah, and it's very hard for accommodation. So, like a lot of people in the comments of the videos, they're usually blaming like uh, immigration and the ref no, no, refugees. No, no, no. no. What, what, what do you think about that? No, no, no. I, I just think, I, you know, I think, you know, I think, I don't blame any immigration yet. It's just overpopulation. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Listen, if. Come to you getting bombed and we're in the war. Bomb it, bomb it. If come to you getting bombed and what, yeah, we'd go to a safe place for another country. So you can't blame them people coming here for safety. Yeah, but it's overpopulated. Yeah. Yeah, that's all it is. I don't blame the people. Listen, fair play to the people coming here. Yeah, I know say, like, they can say there's no jobs. But I like this guy's outlook because that's overpopulation. Simple as that. All the police come in, everybody else comes over, yeah? you got bus drivers and all that, so it's, it's job to everybody. The English city. It's just English. Half of things are lazy. But the they don't want to work. City. Yeah? If Bro, want to say something so bad on the side. If people come from another country, yeah? And all find jobs, yeah? So why can't they get off their ass somewhere? Put the English first. And that's what I'm saying. Put the English all right. first. Cheers. And there you go. Thank you, man. All right. Well, we appreciate I'm, I'm that. That was a good... We like I'm on this person, mate. Big, big, as a true friend. Big Paul, man. Big Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Big old big Paul, Paul, man. Yeah, man. Thank Thank you. Have a good day, guys. Eh? Oh, I really, I really liked that guy. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's he a nice guy. Cool. The, yeah. the other guy was moving a bit. Yeah, he was moving, already. Yeah, he was moving a bit racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was moving a bit racist. A little bro, bit. He's looking at me up and down, man. Bro, bro's going like, he's like, it's an English country. <laughs> <laughs> So like he wanna get his took in so bad, but good job avoiding them, man. Tell her leave a like comment, man. Don't forget to go follow, bro. <laughs> I am having a shocker. I'm gone.